Right, so recently we talked about parallelograms. Parallelograms, in order to be a parallelogram, remember that you need alternate sides to be, we'll pull this back up, we need the opposite sides to be parallel, we need the opposite sides to be congruent, we need that opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles, meaning one right after the other, they are supplementary, meaning they add to 180, and diagonals bisect or cut each other in half. Think of one as the knife for the other. So today we're going to talk about a special parallelogram, one of them, and it is a rectangle. If you're familiar with rectangles, um, a rectangle has all of the properties of parallelograms, so your opposite sides are congruent and parallel, your opposite angles are congruent, and your diagonals bisect each other. Now, because of this right here, because those four right angles are, because the four angles are right angles, meaning that angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D are right angles. Amazingly enough, that's the one thing that we always forget to use uh, that property when we are solving problems with rectangles. Because those four right angles are congruent, that means that both of our diagonals are congruent to each other. So remember that on because it's a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. But now, not only do they bisect each other, but they are congruent. What that means is that all of these pieces are equal to each other. Now, why that's important is that creates two sets. There's one that pairs with this, right? Those are That's an isosceles triangle set. And then this is an isosceles triangle set. Now, this fact that the diagonals are congruent to each other is very helpful in the real world. Um, if you have a framer who is framing in um, a house and they want to frame in the windows or frame in the doors, they can measure the diagonals. And if the diagonals are congruent to each other, then we know that the corners of our windows and our doors are going to be square. You can use that with pouring the um, frame for a foundation. If you want to pour a foundation and you want to make sure that your corners are going to be square. If you want to build a shed, you can measure across the diagonals and make sure that if they are equal, then your shed is going to have square or right angle corners. It's very useful. If you've ever built a bookshelf from Ikea, you can measure across those diagonals before you hammer on that back part and make sure that it is congruent. Make sure those diagonals are congruent because then your bookshelf will stand up nice and straight and because it's perpendicular in the corners. So it's a very useful fact. Okay, so not only are they bisected, but they're congruent to each other. So let's use those facts right there. So determine the numbers ang numbered angles of rectangle ABCD. So I wanna know angle one, two, three, and four. Now here's the hardest thing. Often we look at this and we stare at it forever and you might notice that angle two and angle three are alternate interior and that's exactly correct. But don't overlook the most obvious fact that those, because it is a rectangle, this is a right angle. Maybe that you get in the habit of as soon as you read the word rectangle, you go in and mark those corners so that you don't make the mistake of missing out on the obvious that makes your life a whole lot easier when you're finding these angles. So then, if this angle is 30 and this angle is complementary to it because they are right angles, then angle 1 has to be 60 degrees. And I always fill in my picture as I go. Okay, now also those are alternate interior angles, so that makes sense. Angle two has to be 30. One, because it's alternate interior. Two, because those angles are complementary because they are right angles. So that angle is 30. So now comes the tricky part. How do we get to angle three and angle four? That's where you have to remember that because those diagonals are congruent and because the diagonals are bisected, this triangle right here is an isosceles triangle. Now why that's important is because the base angle theorem says that if two sides are congruent, then the angles that are opposite them are also congruent. That means that angle three is 60 degrees. And then for the same reason, Angle four, this triangle, these two are equal to each other. So this triangle is an isosceles triangle, which means these two base angles have to be congruent, which means that angle four also has to be 30. Now they don't have to be found in numerical order. You can find them in any order using a lot of different properties, alternate interior angles, 
You can use the isosceles triangles. You can use the fact that those corners are right angles. So you have a lot of opportunities that you can use to find that these, the measurements of these angles. Okay, so now let's find a few more. Just knowing this, this one thing right here, let's find the rest of these angles. Again, this is a rectangle. So instantly I know, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this down so that I don't forget because that always happens, we forget. <clears throat> M, J, K, M, J, K is our vertex is at J. So we have our vertex here, we go to J and we have M, J, K. So I'm talking about that whole entire angle right there, which we just said is 90 degrees. If that's 90 degrees, and this angle right here is 27 degrees, then we need to find the complement of that. So angle one would be 60 degrees. We take 90 and we subtract 27, and we get 63. And we always label it in our picture as we go. You don't have to find it numerically, but I'm going to. You could find three at this point, or you can find two at this point. So I'm gonna find two. Now don't forget two, this is an isosceles triangle because it is a rectangle. Now you need to understand that property does not exist in a parallelogram that is not a rectangle. It has to be a rectangle for that to happen. It didn't exist when it was just a plain old parallelogram. That means that angle two is 63 degrees. So I'm gonna label that 63 degrees. Now at this point you can find three or you could find five. If I go up here and I find three, and I remember that when this, was, when this is a rectangle, that this is an isosceles triangle, I know that 27 and angle three are my base angles. <clears throat> so it will also be 27, so I'm gonna label that. From there I can find four or five, it doesn't matter. Now don't forget, even though we're talking about rectangles, this rectangle is made up of a bunch of triangles. This triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So 27 and 27, we would add those two together and subtract it. So we would take 27 plus 27 and we get 54. We subtract that from 180 and we get 126. It's 180. We get that angle four is 126. <clears throat> and just for um, to notation here, so we can use that if you ever need it, those are vertical angles. Okay, now you can use that same idea, 63 plus 63, and subtract that from 180 to get angle five, or don't forget that angle four and angle five form a linear pair. Remember, linear pairs, vertical angles, those are extremely important concepts. So I can take 180 and subtract 126 and get 54. Now, you could also reach way back in your brain and grab that exterior angle sum theorem that says that the exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior angles. But you might not remember that, but if you do, that might be helpful. 27 and 27 is 54, and this is your exterior angle. So if you remember that, it's helpful, but if not, you've got a way around it. <clears throat> Okay, so it's important to recognize those isosceles triangles. Don't forget those isosceles triangles, okay? Given rectangle D, G, F, E, solve for X. Again, don't forget, always mark those right angles as soon as you read the word rectangle. Now what I know is that these two angles together add up to 180 degrees, or excuse me, 90 degrees. They're right angles. So these two, part plus part, equals 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine my like terms. 9x plus 2x is 11x, and then negative six plus eight leaves me with plus two equals 90 degrees. Subtract two from both sides, you get that 11x is equal to 88. Divide both sides by 11 and you get that x is eight. And that is based on the fact that all four angles of a rectangle are right angles. We should always be able to give a property as our reason and justification for why we worked a problem that particular way. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at some problems with sides. QR, so we have this rectangle. We're not dealing with the angles, but it is still helpful. We can draw in these right angles here just so we don't forget because that will come in handy in just a minute. <clears throat> QR, QR is right here. It is opposite of 10. And because it's a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. SR is opposite of PQ, and for the same reason, they are congruent to each other. Then I ask for SQ. Now here we run into a problem, okay? So here's SQ. 
Now, it might be a problem for just a second, but if you notice, that's a diagonal. And the other thing is not only do we have these four little triangles that we've been dealing with earlier, we also have this nice right triangle. We like tri right triangles, they're friendly, right? Because we have lots of things that we can do with right triangles. And what I notice is that I have two sides and I'm asking for the third. That's Pythagorean theorem. Anytime you have two or three sides, you can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for it. So we would do 10 squared plus 24 squared is equal to c squared. That's my hypotenuse, okay? So we would take 10 squared plus 24 squared and we get 676. That's c squared. Take the square root of both sides and you get that C is 26. This is a 5, 12, 13 triple if you recognize that. If not, it's okay, just do Pythagorean theorem. So SQ is 26. PR is also the diagonal and because it is a rectangle, those diagonals are congruent to each other. Not because it's a parallelogram, only because it's a rectangle. And then PT, PT is this small piece Remember that because it's a parallelogram, those diagonals do bisect each other. So set 26, we would take 26 and divide it by 2 and get that PT is 13. <clears throat> okay, don't forget, it takes on all the qualities of being a parallelogram, but then it has more. We're just adding more special features to it. Okay, then lastly, w, uh, VW, so VW is right here, is 9X minus 11. And SU, which is this whole piece all the way across, is 16x minus 12. Now I know your tendency, I know what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to say that 16x minus 12 is equal to 9x minus 11. But you can't say that because SU is the entire diagonal where VW is only half of it. Now we do know that the diagonals are congruent to each other but you can't say that the whole thing is congruent to part of it. But what I do know is that because the diagonals are bisected, that I also know that WT is also 9x minus 11. So you can either take half of SW and set it equal to VW, SU and set it equal to VW, or you can say <clears throat> that it takes two of these to make one of these. So that's what I'm going to do because it's easier to double the two pieces than it is to take half of that algebraic expression. So 9x minus 11 plus 9x minus 11, that's 18x minus 22 is equal to 16x minus 12, right? Part plus part. That's where this came from. If you need to see that, it, you have to do the whole piece and that's why you need to label it so you can see. Okay, then we're just going to do our algebra. Subtract 16x from both sides and add 22 to both sides. You get 2x is equal to 10 or x is equal to 5. Then the question says wt. How long is wt? wt is part of it. So we can just substitute it in. We know that wt is 9x minus 11. So 9 times x, which was 5, minus 11 is 45 minus 11 which is 34. So WT is 34. And just so you know, so is WU, so is WV, and so is SW. All of those are 34 because they got bisected and they are equal to each other. Okay, so we have all of the qualities of being a rectangle. Opposite sides are congruent and parallel. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary and the diagonals bisect each other. And because of those right angles, the diagonals are congruent to each other, okay? So that's what happens because those four angles are congruent. So the diagonals in a rectangle are, we know that the diagonals in a rectangle are congruent, okay? They're also bisected because it's a parallelogram, but the main thing we want to get out of a rectangle is that those diagonals are congruent or equal in length. 